you're searching in different places and you think that all these things can fill that void and you've tried so many different things from partying relationships sex you've tried so many different things and you keep coming up empty and God laid this on my heart to just speak about the destruction of sin and sin is sin and and sometimes we tend to want to um, change what God says and we try to in this time there's a lot of people that's living their truth their their own truth as you call it and there's no truth outside of Jesus Christ. As he said, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, except by me, All right? And I remember a few years ago, I, met, I, 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 I recommitted my life to God because I, I, at the time I was sick and I cried out for healing. But just experiencing God, coming to know God, and not just knowing of Him, allowed me to realize that I was needing more than just healing, a physical healing, that I was in a, sp a, a, a spiritual state that was really bad, right? That I, when, when I experienced God, just the fact that his presence made my spirit come alive, I realized that all those things that I was looking for, all those things that I was searching for, in relationship and in partying and all those things that what I indeed needed was Jesus and just experiencing God and the fullness that he gives and how he satisfies and let me tell you something you don't know how much you need peace until you you're in that place where you have no peace and I had no peace and I, I was still going on thinking that I had life, I was doing life and, 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 and things was great. And this is how sin works, right? While you're in it and you think you're you enjoying it, damage is causing until God, you experience God and you stop. Because it's like you're in this rat race, it's like you're running, it's like you're on a treadmill. It feels like you're on a treadmill when you're basically in the world and you're doing what you want to do and you think that you're, do, you're in a good place. And when God slows you down and you start to examine yourself because what, and you're in the presence of God when you're in Christ and really get to know God, when you're in God and you've experienced him, all the things in your spiritual eyes become open. You start examining, you're realizing how broken you were, how, how much sin has inflicted wounds and damages in your soul, right? And, 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 and I remember that night I, I laid and I wept, I cried in my bed just realizing that all this time, all the things that I've been looking for in relationship, in partying, uh, just not having a stable relationship with God, just, and in this, we think that we can have Christ in one hand and we can have the world in one hand and we can, because he said, come from among them and be he separate. And he says, the scripture tells us if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. Because God will never, ever, he will never, ever, at any point, agrees with sin. Because the sin is sin is an enemy of God. Because it's so destructive. It rips away, it breaks away at the soul. It rips away, it causes damages that only God can heal. And when you come to God, we have all these bad memories and all these things that we're working through. And when God is trying to get us to to walk into certain things and to, to experience certain things, all those bad memories, we have to work through them. And that's one of the reasons why God said that that's one of the reasons why God instructs us to walk, to live for him from a young age and to and to, um, uh, to shun the very appearance of sin and of evil because he knows the damages. When we're young, we're thinking, oh, he's trying to keep us from fun. He's trying to uh, stop us from living life to the fullest. But he comes to give life and life more abundantly. But if we can only understand the damages of sin, to know that he's trying to protect us, not keep us from anything good. All good and perfect gifts come from the Father up above. And so I just feel this, this urge to come and speak to someone that's carrying that weight. You're at the brink of giving up and you're feeling like 
you're, you're feeling so broken and so hurt. But I just want to let you know God, that God heals and he delivers. And not just physical healing. Not just healing from um, any sickness that you're uh, experiencing. But he That's heals the That's why words soul. instruct us to be not conformed to this world. But be he transformed by the renewing of your mind. God wants us to... To, to, to read his word, meditate on his word, and to think and see things the way he sees them. And so we can experience um, complete healing. It's a process, and we have to commit to that process, but we have to fully understand the destructiveness so of sin. So in my sin. younger days, I used to say, I am a child of God, but I never read the word. I didn't spend time with God the way I should. When I just got saved, I used to do it. But my heart desired, my heart was craving after the things of the world and and that's one of the things you have to know if your heart is craving after the things of the world that's not god's best for you put that 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 desire before god and ask him to remove it right and from spending time with god eventually those things are going to be worked out in your heart because the scripture tells us that our hearts are deceitful above all things and we don't know what's in our heart and that's why we have to take our heart to god for for God to purge our heart, for God to cleanse our heart, for God to give us the desires that we need, the desires good that's going to pull us closer to him, the desires that's going to set our life on the right path. And that's one of the things I did not do. And so I came to God broken. I came to God. I used to cry a lot. I was so broken and hurt and living in a sea of regrets. But then I realized that God would take or all the things that we've been through and he will allow it to work together for our good. And so now I'm in a place where I can speak to and connect to young people and let them know that even in your mistakes, even in your brokenness, even in everything that you've been through, God still loves you and he wants to heal those wounds. He wants to use your life for his glory. And so I just come to encourage someone that's that's going through, that feel like you're forgotten, that feel like you're not loved, to, to tell you God loves you. And as I, I want to share the scripture with you as well that God placed on my heart. It comes from Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30. And he says, come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is a light. God says he wants to place his yoke around your neck because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And this is what um, the enemy doesn't tell us about sin, right? Um, it starts off as fun, but that thing that you start doing and it seems fun, pretty soon he's going to yoke you around your neck. And after a while, you, you're going to be like a puppet on a string. Right, you're gonna be caught up in the cycle of sin and and destructiveness, and you're not gonna even have the ability to say no at, at, at a certain point because you're yoked by the enemy. Whatever you're doing, it starts off as sin. Okay, I'm just gonna have sex this one time because you know, and, and you justify the reason. Okay, I'm just gonna do, do take one shot. Um, what, of whatever it is and you justify the reason but pretty soon it becomes an addiction and he yokes you around your neck and he takes your life in in a, in a pattern of destruction he takes your life in a cycle right and and this is how he works and and, and when you get to a point of brokenness and, and feeling so rejected and and, and 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 like everyone is turned against you and you feel like there's no hope and there's no there's no way out and that's how he works and he tries to make you feel like, okay, there's no way out. So you might as well do the unthinkable. And I, I just come to tell you that God comes to give you life and life. There's no abundant. sin that can outweigh what God has done for you on the cross. He died. He died just for you so you can walk in complete freedom. He died so Sin can be placed under your feet. So sickness can be placed under your feet. So everything that we're struggling in this life can be placed under your feet. But you only have to submit your heart to him. You have to give him your heart first. You can't, you can't, you can't fix your life yourself. You can't do it. The, the, the enemy wants you to think that you can fix your life. And he has you in this, this, this constant trying to see if you can do good we can't we're all born in sin and we're shaped in iniquity and so we have to come to god give our hearts to the lord and he fights our battles for us 
that's the only way that we can win because this is not a physical fight. We're in a spiritual fight. Us. That we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. It may come in the form and it may seem most of the times we're fighting against a person or a thing, but we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're wrestling against principalities and powers in high places. And so we have to give God our heart, give God our lives, and he will do the fighting for us because the battle has already been won. The battle has already been won. When Christ died on the cross and he rose on that third day, victory was given unto us. And so God wants to come into that wound. God wants to come into that hurt. He wants to come into that rejection. He wants to come into that brokenness. He did it for me. He's no respecter of persons. What he has done for one, he'll do for you. And I was in a, just a brokenness and feeling like um, there was no way out. And, and God healed not just my body and delivered me from endometriosis, but, but he healed my soul. And my spirit man came alive. He breathed on my spirit man. My spirit man came alive. And so it's just for me to commit to the ways of God and not try to hold God in one hand and the world in one hand, but know that, the two, that they cannot mix right and so i just want to come and speak into your heart into your lives to let you know that there's no sin that's too great and you cannot fight this battle on your own god says that he's come to give you life and life more abundantly and and there's a scripture i also want to share because this this is a scripture that spoke to me i remember um just um from thinking sometimes we think that we can we're, we're we're all right and we can do life on our own and our way is the right way and 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 what we have to understand is god's word is, is the scripture tells us that god be truth and every man be a lie because god's word is eternally it, can, it, can, it will never pass away he says before my word pass away heaven and earth has to pass away and so we can change god's word to meet our lifestyle and or um what we call or truth God will never come down to me he will meet us where we are to change us to change our hearts and to, to lead us into all truth but God will never God God truth cannot change it's constant and so God has given us his words to change our hearts so we can experience that life that he has died for us to experience and so you can't change, try to change God's word to fit your lifestyle. You have to take God's word and change your lifestyle to meet God's requirements. And he's not asking us to do it from an external um, sense because that's religion. He wants to come on the inside of us and change our hearts and start working on the inside of us to change our lives. And that's how, uh, that's how God works. He works from the inside out. Because if we're trying to change things from the outside in, that's, that's, that's works and we can't do anything in and of ourselves. God wants to come on the inside of our heart and birth the purpose and why he's placed us in this earth for a reason and for, for a purpose. You have a greater purpose than to, to live in, in, in anxiety. You have a greater purpose than to live in your fears. You have a greater purpose than to live in that broken relationship and to accept um, what's not God's best for you that place just settling in relationship and taking um, just settling for way, way less than I'm worth but when you know when you come to know you're creating your savior when you know what true love is through Jesus Christ you can't settle for certain things anymore not to say that you're better than anyone but you when your eyes when your eyes are open and your spirit come alive and you know what true love is through the savior there's no way you can stay in, in, in relationships that's going to devalue you, relationships that's going to ask you to do things that God is saying that that's, that's, that's not the way he created you to live, relationships that, that's going to pull away on your, at your soul, right? And God teaches you how to handle relationships. He teaches you what's right, what's wrong. And that our body should be a live to, should be a temple of the Holy Spirit. It's not supposed to be uh, to, to to do what we want to do with it anytime we want to do it. It's supposed to be rendered to God. And when God sees fit and you serving Him and living in your purpose, He's gonna align you with that right person that He has for you. You just have to trust Him. And I just want to share this scripture with you. When I, the first time I heard this scripture, it spoke to my heart because I was that person that thought I was doing life and I was doing life the right way and not knowing that 
it, if it conflicts with God's word, it's wrong. Right? And it said Proverbs 14 and 12. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are ways of death. It says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are ways of death. And when I look at this generation and I see what's going on, I see myself. They're, 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 they're doing things their way and not wanting to accept what God says. And God is the only way. Jesus is the only way, the only truth, the only life. No one comes to the Father except through the Son, Jesus Christ. And we can change God's word to fit our lifestyle. God has given us his word so we can apply it to our lives. And we can allow his word to become one with our hearts so it can change our lives. That's what God has given us his words to do. And that's why he instructs us that let his words be true and every man be a lie. Because we will be held accountable for whether we're going to be obedient to those words or we're going to choose to live in disobedience because it's a choice. And and, and, I, and I often hear, the, hear this statement that God doesn't send anyone to hell and he doesn't. It's a choice. As the word says, I place before you life and death. Choose ye, choose ye this day who you want to serve. I've placed before you life and death. Choose ye this day who you want to serve. He told us that the way to, to, to that his way is narrow, but the way to to destruction is broad. There's so many things on there. There's beautiful things. There's, there's things that seem flashy. There's things that seem um, pleasurous for this moment. There's things that um, we, we want to um, just grab at the, the things that you have in your heart, right? The things that are not of God. As a scripture direct speaks to the sons of disobedience. And so the enemy is already placed in our head because this is one thing I used to... He wants you to feel like God is against you and he's not for you. God is for you. He said, I know the plans I have for you. His plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you hope and a future. And that's one of the things I've experienced coming to God from this experience, dysfunctional relationships and allowing myself to settle and allow myself to go through heartbreaks and allow myself to, to just to, to, to party and allow just certain things in my life that left me broken. And God has healed me. And he wants to do the same for you. And so I hope you're encouraged by this word. I hope you're blessed. And I hope you're encouraged to press into God to not give up because God has great plans for you. And it's plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. God loves you. And I pray that you press into God like never before, that you give him your heart. Because it says our heart is deceitful above all things and we don't know what's in it. And that's why we have to give God our heart so he can cater to it. He can remove those things that are not supposed to be there and place his purposes in our hearts. So our lives can go in a way that it should go. And there's this one thing I also want to touch on is we have to be careful of the things that we let into our eye gates and our ear gates. Because I remember when I was younger, not knowing, not understanding, before I even gave my life to Christ, I used to watch things that I, I, I shouldn't be watching. You know, you used to sneak and do things behind your parents' back. And then the, the, when I remember when I submitted my life to God, God showed me that, that some of those things that I allowed, to, to, um, that some of those things that I watched and listened to, that they're the ones that took my life on the path that I didn't want to go because I didn't have the word of God in me. How can you, um, you see, and these are some of the things, the lies that we believe. I just want this that to be just some just just talking and connecting these are some of the lies that we believe where we call ourselves children of god but we don't know the word and we don't know who god is and you can know of god but do you know god do you know who he is do you know um do you know what his word says do you know what he stands for Right? Do you spend time in his presence for him to speak to your heart? Do you spend time in his presence to seek out his purposes for your life? And I didn't have the word of God in me. And I used to listen to all different types of music that wasn't edifying to the soul. I used to watch things like pornography that wasn't edifying to the soul. I used to hide and watch those things. And it, it will take your life into the wrong path. 
that at that time I didn't understand. But now I understand that and that's why the enemy open allows us to, to at a young age watch these things, get it into our system and it takes our life in the wrong path. So that's why uh, we get these ideas in our head to at a young age to feed on these things, not knowing that whatever you feed on is going to play out after a while in your life. Whether it be good or it be bad, those things will play out in your life. So we have to be careful. And parents, be careful of what your kids are watching, what they're listening to. And so I just want to encourage you. I hope you're blessed. I'll, I'll, I'll lift everyone up in prayer that's listening to this video, um, that you'll be encouraged. I pray that God will touch your heart. If you're in a place of feeling like you're giving up, I pray that the Holy Spirit will come into that pain, that rejection, that hurt, and minister healing in the name of Jesus. That if you're desiring healing from a sickness, that the Holy Spirit will speak to your heart and, and let you know that He's he stayed on the cross just for you so you can walk in healing, so you can walk in freedom. As when he rose on the third day, he said it is finished. And that's everything that God has for you is finished. And if you just submit your heart and your life to him, he will work out his purposes in your heart. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share.